According to almost everyone now is a terrible time to buy a house, but would you still think that if we are on the cusp of a buyer's market? I'm going to share with you where we're at today and why we may be heading in that direction. Let's get into it. Um, see, I didn't make this up. Almost everyone thinks it's a bad idea to buy a house right now. That's what a survey shows. So this Fannie Mae uh, survey measuring housing sentiment said that 84% of respondents in September said now's a bad time to purchase a house. Only 16% percent believed that it was a good time to buy. That matches the all-time low that was set last year. They talk about how this pessimism is really um, coming from mortgage rates, uh, persistently over 7%. This is what's deepening the malaise that consumers feel about the housing market. So on that note, where are rates? Rates surged towards 8% after jobs data. Yay. Okay, so what happened with the jobs report? Well, the U.S. economy added 336,000 jobs, almost twice what was expected. I think it was 176,000, something like that, was expected. So you have to remember that good news for the economy usually means bad news for mortgage rates, and uh, that's what happened. So with mortgage rates being high, what does everyone think? Well, 17% of respondents believe that mortgage rates will go down within the next 12 months. 46% expect them to increase and the remaining 37% say that they will stay where they are. So really no relief in sight, uh, I think is essentially what we're, we're coming to here. Um, the volume of mortgage applications slumped to its lowest level since December of 1996. Uh, so, you know, we're at a 28 year low uh, with that and we're also at a 23 year high in terms of mortgage rates. So Confidence is at a pretty record low. This goes on to say that home buyers aren't the only ones with growing concerns. There's also sellers. 37% of Americans said it's a bad time to sell, and that's up from 34% in August when they did this survey. So many homeowners are not interested in giving up their locked in mortgage rate and getting a higher one. We've talked about this scenario many, many times, but it's something that's out there. It's keeping things kind of of locked in tight and that's really what has pushed prices up this year but like I said we may be on the cusp of a buyer's market at least here in Phoenix so here's what's going on with that active listings uh, we have supply clearly going up. You can see that on this graph um, it's actually up 22 percent from 10 weeks ago and that's a pretty quick increase. According to the Cromford Report, this is uh, kind of outside of that seasonal norm that we usually see. I mean, you can look back. Let's go to let's go to 2019 uh, before things were a little crazy. You still you have this uptick, right? And then for the rest of the year, listings go down. Not everyone lists their home, but you can kind of see there's usually a little bit up and then a little bit down. So usually not that concerning, but like this 22% is a little bit more than normal, is what they're saying. So what happens when we have an increase in listings? Well, sellers have to start competing. And when they start competing, they start dropping their prices. So ultimately, this could mean that we're going to see some price softening, which is what the Cromford Market Index has been telling us this whole time. Uh, further, Let's look at listings under contract. Now, this is essentially our demand. This is uh, what buyers are doing out there. They're getting listings under contract. So when you have higher number of listings under contract, you have a higher demand out there. When it's lower, you have lower demand. No surprise that our demand is low, but I mean, look, it's just been a downward line since May. Again, not surprising considering what's been going on with rates, but why I point this out is that we are seeing listings under contract go down, therefore lower demand, but we are also seeing listings go up, more listings hitting the market. Therefore, that demand is not keeping up with the supply that's getting out there. And we're coming from a situation where we have low supply and more demand. So you have to you know, think about the fact that it's going to take some time before supply and demand meet. But the point is, they're coming closer together. And at this point, the demand is not absorbing the amount of supply. 
In addition, keep in mind, this is a slower time of year for us as we get into the fall and the holidays. Uh, people get more distracted with the holidays. They're not as interested in selling their home if they don't have to or buying a home if they don't have to because they've got a lot of other things going on. So we're going into this time of year where usually listings go up, but they're going up a little bit more than normal. And our demand typically goes down a little bit, but I would certainly say this is accelerated based on where mortgage rates are at. And you know what's interesting about this too is the number of listings under contract is following the same path and at the same level as it was in 2006. Now I'm not foreshadowing that we're gonna have a 2008 like housing crash because of this, because our situation is totally different right now. We don't have an oversupply of homes, but we do wanna keep an eye on this because remember, supply is starting to go up. The amount of demand that we have is falling down just like it did in 2006. So why would this be a good time to be a buyer? Well, you're going to be one of the few people out there looking for a house right now if demand continues to go down and if supply continues to go up, you're gonna have more options. Sellers have to be more competitive. You therefore can probably negotiate a little bit more. So if you are thinking about buying right now, typically the holidays, is the best time to be a buyer. You can be more competitive, but even further with the trends that we're seeing, it might be a really good time to be a buyer. So keep that in mind. You know, caveat, I will say, make sure you're buying to hold it long term. You can afford it, etc. I'm not advocating for anyone to go buy just because it feels like a good time. Uh, you know, you have to check all those boxes before you jump into something like that. So let's look at the Cromford Market Index. I am a subscriber to the Cromford Report and they have this awesome tool that I talk about every week. And this is an index that really looks at supply and demand in our market. Now, 138 is the Cromford Market Index for the entire Phoenix metro area. Our demand is at 74, our supply is at 53. What does that mean? Well, 100 is that normal range. So that means that demand is about 25% below normal and supply is about 47% below normal. So again, our supply is lower than our demand, but last week or a few weeks ago, this number was closer to 80. And this number was closer to 49. And so we've seen these two start to move in a direction coming closer together, which brings this overall index down. What does 138 mean? Well, anything over 110 on this index is considered a seller's market. So 138, we're still in a seller's market throughout the majority of the Phoenix metro area. But when we look at all of these cities individually, you'll see a lot of red arrows. And what that means is that all of these cities have lost momentum for sellers. They lost a little bit of ground, a little bit of negotiating power. You'll see that Chandler is at the very top as it has been losing a lot of steam. So the way that they have this set up is that red arrow means it's bad for a seller, green arrow means it's good for a seller, and as you can see, there are no green arrows there. So the month over month numbers have decreased for every one of these major cities. And last week, there were a few green arrows, but this is the first time that we have seen a table this dismal for sellers since November of last year. The overall change month over month this week as we look at this is 11.2%, negative 11.2%. Last week when I talked about this, it was negative 9.4%. And the week before that, it was negative 7.8%. I say all of that to tell you that this trend is accelerating. We are seeing all of these cities lose ground for sellers and gain ground for buyers. So this is why I'm saying, you guys, if you are thinking about buying, Right now, you're starting to get more of an advantage, not only seasonally, because it typically can be a better time to buy right now, but also we're seeing this trend where sellers are gonna have to start competing. We're seeing well above average declines in a number of these cities, Chandler being one of them. You can see that kind of leading the pack with that big number there. We also have Goodyear, Buckeye, and Maricopa, all of them falling pretty significantly. And anything between 90 to 110 is a balanced market. But if you see Goodyear, Maricopa, both of those are on the cusp. So if you fall out of that 90 range, you are then in a buyer's market. So we've got Goodyear, Maricopa, even Queen Creek and Buckeye, I would argue all being very close to being buyer's markets.
Cromford Report is saying that those four cities could actually be in buyer's markets by the end of the month. So if you're a seller, if you're a buyer, keep that in mind. Now, like I said, I'm not advocating for you to buy if you're not in the right position, but you may have some advantage right now considering the trend that we're seeing. Interest rates are going up, but potentially prices could start to come down, putting us in a better spot for affordability, hopefully. If you're interested in learning more about affordability, check out this video right here. Thanks for joining, guys. I'll be back on Friday.